37-year-old man is behind bars for attempting to kidnap a 5th grade elementary school student while she walked to school. The incident occurred at 7.56am on Friday the 26th of January in the area of North 43rd and West Onyx Avenues in Glendale, Arizona. Authorities said they responded to a call from a young girl and obtained neighbor's surveillance footage, which showed a man making a U-turn in his silver sedan, jump out of his car, and chase the girl along a sidewalk for a short distance before heading back to his car. The girl told police that an unknown adult male attempted to grab her as she walked to Sunset Elementary School nearby. She yelled no and managed to get away. The girl says she noticed a suspect follow her from her apartment. Police tracked the vehicle down and identified the suspect as 37-year-old Joseph Ruiz. The following day, Joseph was arrested and booked into the Maricopa County Jail on kidnapping and crimes against children charges. Joseph has a history of violence and has previously been convicted of aggravated assault after stabbing his mother in the neck. The investigation into the matter continues. A 48-year-old man is behind bars following the death of a two-year-old girl. At around 12.50am on Friday the 19th of January, authorities responded to a home at 1417 Drake Avenue in Centerville, Iowa on reports of an injured toddler. When officers and medics arrived, they found two-year-old Jenny Marbury critically injured inside the residence. She was taken to Mercy One Hospital in Centerville and from there airlifted to the University of Iowa Hospital in Iowa City, where she died from her injuries eight days later on the morning of Saturday the 27th of January. At 12.30pm that same day, authorities arrested 48-year-old Roger Gillespie without incident on a charge of child endangerment causing death and booked him into the Appanoose County Jail. Authorities said that Roger was Journey's caretaker at the time she suffered her injuries. It's unclear if Roger and Journey were related, what injuries the girl sustained while he cared for her, or who reported her injuries to law enforcement. No further details have been released, as the investigation into the matter continues. Police are investigating after a 27-year-old man was fatally shot in his car at a gas station. At 7.41pm on Thursday the 25th of January, authorities responded to reports of a shooting at the Gulf Gas Station at the intersection of Southwest Evangeline Thruway and East Pinhook Road in Lafayette, Louisiana. When officers arrived, they found a man inside a silver Camaro in a critical condition suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. Officers rendered emergency aid while an ambulance was en route, but he died at the scene. The victim was identified as 27-year-old Taj Brassard and his death was ruled a homicide. No arrests have been made to date, and the motive of the killing is unclear, as the investigation into the matter continues. A couple are behind bars for abusing an eight-year-old girl. At around 6.30pm on Thursday the 25th of January, Megan Rowe answered Lael banging on her front door at her home at 720 43rd Street in Ashland, Kentucky, to find a young girl covered in bruises. The girl told Megan that she'd been kicked out of her home two houses down the street, and that she was scared. The woman allowed the girl inside her home and called 911. The child said that the injuries were caused by family members Austin and Kayla Frazier, who began pounding on Megan's front door, but she did not answer it. When officers arrived at the scene, they arrested the couple. Police saw bruising on the child's arm and body, a deep laceration over her eye, and a burn mark on the palm of her hand. The child told officers that the couple beat her with a metal pipe, forcibly placed her hand on a hot stove, and threw something that hit her in the head. The young girl was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. Doctors said she had several broken bones in various stages of healing. Austin and Kayla are charged with first-degree criminal abuse of a child under 12, and are held at the Boyd County Detention Center with their bonds set at $100,000 each. Megan said, I'm so grateful that the child was brave enough to run to a complete stranger's house in the rain and the dark to seek shelter. I'm so glad she was willing to run the risk. She didn't know us. She didn't know whether we'd help her and keep her safe, but she tried anyway. That girl was so brave and so courageous, she said. The investigation into the matter continues.